Hey guys, welcome back to Megan Grace DIY and part two of our three-part holiday dress series. In part two, we're gonna work on the basic construction of the body of the dress, but let's remember where we left off. We had put together all the shell pieces and the lining pieces, and now it's our turn to join them all together. To start this section of our dress series, I'm gonna lay in front of me the bodice shell and the bodice lining. You know, it's really sunny out today, so you can really see how sparkly and pretty this fabric is, although there is glitter all over my house. Our first step is gonna be joining the top of the bodice outside fabric and the top of the bodice lining fabric. I've got the print of the outside of my dress facing up or facing me, and I'm gonna take my lining and match up the shoulder seams. Now the inside of your lining should be facing you. And I'm just gonna take this moment to apologize for the fact that my pink fluffy bun pops in and out of the scene from time to time. I'm really gonna work on when I have got a further shot away from the iron, trying to not get my big old head in the scene. You can see a bit more clearly on this side, I'm taking the seam of the shoulder of the lining and the seam of the shoulder of the shell of the dress. I'm lining them up perfectly. And one of those ways you can do that is stick your pin through the seam of the lining and check on the other side. Yep, just like I'm doing there to make sure that they're lined up. Your pin should be going through the seam on both sides. Now I'm gonna pick this part of the dress up the shoulders and hang it a bit and lay it back down. One things I have learned about linings is you can't push them where they need to be. They have to fall there on their own. I know it's a bit of a difficult concept to understand, but I feel like if you hang the garment and let the lining fall where it naturally wants to fall, you're gonna come out with a much more well put together garment in the end because you won't have any weird folds or wrinkles. Once I let that scoop neckline naturally line up, I started at center front, putting a pin in place, and then I'm working my way out towards each shoulder seam, pinning the lining and the shell of the dress together. Once you're done pinning the front together, we're gonna flip the bodice over and pin together those back panels right along the neckline. I'm going to continue pinning from the shoulder seam out towards the center back seam, which is where our zipper is gonna end up. Now you're going to want to sew the entire neckline together, but we're not going to do that. We're gonna stop three quarters of an inch short of center back. The reason we're doing that is because when we sew our zipper in, we're gonna sew it initially with just the outside fabric and then lay the lining on top of it, hiding the zipper tape. Once we're done pinning, we're gonna start with center front and sew our way outwards towards center back. And don't forget, you're gonna stop three quarters of an inch short of center back. Here I am at the machine starting at center front and I'm sewing at a stitch length of three with a seam allowance of five eighths. I'm gonna continue from center front all the way to center back sewing the neckline together. It's always worth double checking any seams before you sew over them because if it's a quarter inch off, is it gonna ruin your dress? No, but a mark of a professional sewer is making sure your seams are perfectly lined up. And trust me, it's satisfying when they are perfectly lined up. And then as we come around the back side of the dress, I'm continuing to sew at five eighths and I'm gonna back stitch at that last pin using it as a guide point to stop. After you've clipped your threads, we're gonna repeat this process starting at center front and sewing along the neckline coming out the other side of the dress. I'm using the last pin as a marker to back stitch, so I make sure I keep that last three quarters of an inch open. Instead of heading straight to the iron to iron our neckline out, we're gonna apply an understitch. That's where we take the seam allowance and we push it towards one side of the garment. In this case, we're pushing the seam allowance towards the lining. Our goal here is to stitch approximately 1 8 of an inch away from our initial seam. You wanna really take it slow and make sure you're not crossing over your initial seam because that'll really defeat the purpose of the understitching. Just like our original neckline, I'm starting at center front and working my way outwards. Now, in case I didn't say this before, the reason we start at center front and work our way outwards versus starting at one end and working our way to the other end is so there's no shifting in the fabric. You can very easily shift a fabric towards the wrong side if you go from one end to the other. If you're starting at center front, anything that's shifted is shifted towards center back. So it just ends up laying nicer. When I get to the cross section of my shoulder seams, I'm gonna take this pretty slow because in terms of my fabric, this is a pretty thick area. You've got about, I think four layers of fabric you're sewing through at that point, which is 
in at least my dress, a bit of a thicker area. And just like our initial seam, we're gonna stop at three quarters of an inch short of our center back. And here's what my understitch looks like when it's completed. It's an even one eighth of an inch away from my initial stitching. And you can see here it's nice and flat and it keeps its evenness all the way around. Once you're happy about your understitching around the entire collar, we're gonna trim away the excess seam allowance. And we're doing this to eliminate any unneeded bulk in the neckline. If you leave it there, the neckline's not gonna press quite as nicely as you'd like it to. And especially with the fabric I chose, it's got a bit of thickness to it. So anytime I can eliminate some seam allowance is probably helpful to how the final dress will look. And here's a quick glance at what our understitching should look like from the lining side or basically the inside of the garment. The reason we do understitching, especially at this neckline portion of the dress, is so the lining is gently pulled to the inside of the garment. You don't wanna line a dress and have like a little line of black poking out at the neckline. Before I take an iron to this neckline, I'm gonna put a few pins into the bodice just to hold the two layers in place together properly. I'm pinning things like the shoulder seam together, the side seam together, and a few pins around the armhole. Again, this is just to make sure the two layers are married properly before I iron it in place. This is a very optional step and you'll see me take pins out as I no longer need them along the way, but it's just something I do to make sure the layers are laying together properly. Now I'm in a really good spot to iron my neckline. When it comes to the neckline, I want to make sure it lays very nice and flat against my chest, especially because it's a scoop neckline and it's kind of a feature of the garment. Another way to finish off a neckline like this is using a facing versus a lining. And for whatever reason, I've never liked facings. I've always been drawn to a beautiful lining for a garment. But one of the pros of a facing here would be you wouldn't have to worry about any weird wrinkles that you see I'm trying to press out between the scoop neckline and the armhole. That's a place where your lining can get misaligned. And again, if you sew it that way, you're gonna get some weird puckering in your garment and it's just not gonna lay correctly. I'm really, really happy with how this neckline's turning out. It lays really beautifully, and once I try it on, I'm sure it's gonna look really great across my collarbone. Moving along to our next step, we're gonna attack the gathering that sits underneath the bust line. And gathering is a place I have found a lot of people either watching my videos or my students can get easily tripped up. To be honest, it does take a couple of times doing some gathering to really get the hand for it. Um, so don't feel bad if the first couple tries, it doesn't come out perfect. If you remember back to the first video, we marked the four darts along this bust line. I'm going back and marking them with pins now to prepare for a basting stitch. Now what's a basting stitch? It's when you turn the length all the way up on a straight stitch. That big length and chunkier seam allows you to pull the thread, gathering your fabric into place. You will sew two basting stitches in between the pins. Another tip I mentioned before is that at this point when I'm sewing the basting stitch, I'm stitching together both the outside of the garment and the inside of the garment. That's so I'm gathering the two layers together. If you gather them separately, it adds more bulk to the garment, which we don't really want in this area. We just want it to gently fit underneath our bust. Another important note is to make sure you leave the ends of your thread. You're gonna need those so you can pull the fabric in. Also, don't backstitch on a basting stitch. We don't wanna form any kind of knots that might impede the gathering process. As I complete the basting stitch for the other side of the bust, I wanna mention it's kind of up to you design-wise if you want to sew one layer of basting stitches or two. One layer is gonna give you a slightly chunkier gather, two is gonna give you a finer gather. It's a bit up to you on that one. Once I'm done with my basting stitches, I'm gonna lay my bodice back on the ironing board. I'm gonna take the tails and make sure they're out and there's no knots. And then I'm gonna take the two sets of tails that are closer to center front, and I'm gonna knot them, not together, but on their own. This knot will serve as your stopping point for when you're gathering the fabric inward. I'm sure you're asking right now, well, how do I know how much to gather? You're gonna take the midriff piece of the dress and you're gonna line it up at the side seams, and then you'll see what's extra, and that's how you know how much to gather your underbust. Now I have to admit here, I did a little bit of an oopsie. The part that showed me gathering the bust into the midriff piece, it didn't record. 
I think my phone died in the middle of it. So I didn't notice till I went to go edit the video. That's why all of a sudden there's sleeves on the top of the dress. I had to back step about four steps so I could re-record attaching the midriff. And I'm just gonna ask you to ignore that the sleeves are already there since we're gonna do that step in a little bit, but we're gonna continue on with my re-recorded clip of attaching the midriff. So here's the outside panel of the midriff piece of the dress. The curve should be facing upward. And then I'm gonna flip it upside down. So basically we've got the print of the outside of the dress for the top bodice and the print of the outside of the dress for the midriff touching each other. I'm starting by pinning together the side seams with the side seams of the midriff. Once I've got the side seams pinned down as sort of an anchor point, I'm gonna move to the back panels of the dress. Now on the packaging, it shows a small amount of gathering at the back panel, but when I try to line the pieces up, I don't see any space for gathering. So I'm basically just easing the back midriff into the back panel, and it should be sewn nice and flat and iron out flat. The only gathering I have found in creating this dress is underneath the bust. By the way, if you're a fan of bright leggings like mine that are peeking into the frame right now, check out K-Deer. They've got some great styles. Once I finished pinning both of my back panels in place, I'm gonna move to the center front. I found the small slits that I previously made in the pieces indicating center front and line them up and pin it in place. Once you've got center front pinned together, move outwards. There should be a notch in both the midriff piece and the bodice piece indicating where that first gathering point starts. Then you're gonna do something similar near the side seam. You're gonna pin flat from the side seam to where the gathering stitches start. So that portion is gonna remain completely flat. Once you do that, you're gonna look underneath and see what fabric is extra in the bodice as compared to the midriff piece. You should have a little bit extra. That's what gets gathered into the midriff. I've gone ahead and gathered in my bodice fabric in that one spot to make sure it fit the midriff piece. Once I'm satisfied with how much it's gathered, I'm gonna pin the bodice to the midriff piece. And if you need a couple extra pins here, that's okay to make sure that your gathers are gonna lay nice and flat when you go to sew. Now that I pin the entire midriff piece to the bodice, I'm gonna start at center front and I'm gonna sew my way outward. Here we are back at our handy dandy sewing machine and I'm starting again at center front, attaching the midriff piece to our bodice. I'm gonna stitch with a stitch length of three at five eight seam allowance. Just to clarify for anybody who isn't sure at this point, we are stitching together three layers of fabric, the shell fabric for our midriff and then both the shell and the lining fabric for the bodice. The reason we're not sewing on the midriff lining layer is because that comes next. So as I sew, I'm just making sure that my gathers are nice and straight. I'm not having any weird big chunks that are going underneath my presser foot. And remember, as we come up to seam crosses like this one, we're gonna just make sure that that seam is perfectly lined up. As we come up to center back, we're gonna get a little tricky here, okay? So we're gonna stop again at that 3 fourths of an inch mark. We're gonna stop there. We're gonna take our fabric out from underneath the machine. From this point on, we want to continue sewing the dress layers together. So just those two shell layers. We're going to fold back our lining and drop it out of the seam at this point. The reason we're doing this is it's going to be a lot easier to put our zipper in and then cleanly sew down our lining and not have to undo any stitches and make anything weird. And once I've got that three quarter of an inch patch sewn, I'm going to pull this out from the machine and I'm going to do the whole thing again on the other side. And here I am completing that same step on the other side where I've dropped the lining out of the seam and I'm gonna sew just that three quarters of an inch at the end, just those two dress fabrics together. We are moving right along here with our midriff band now attached to our bodice. You can fold your midriff band down now and we're gonna press it nice and flat. But before we do that, one thing I'd really recommend is just trying the piece on at this point if you're making it to fit yourself. One thing I noticed was my gathers were a little bit further apart than my actual breasts were. So I had to move my gathers back into center a bit um, just to make them look right on me. Of course, it's up to you at this point if you'd like to press from the inside and press the seam open or press it down and flat like I am doing. I'm doing it from the outside just because I don't wanna crush my gathers. Um, I know I said we don't want them too puffy, but we also don't want them pressed into oblivion. So, you know, I put a little bit of heat on my gathers to press them into place, but I don't, you know, fully press the iron onto my gathers. 
And once you're satisfied with the pressing on the entire under bust seam, we're gonna flip the bodice so our lining is facing up. Looking from the inside of our bodice, we're now gonna attach the lining of the midriff. So I'm having that larger side of the curve facing downward with the opening of my seams facing me. And I'm gonna lay the quote unquote right side of our lining to the other right side of the lining. So basically the outside pieces of the lining are touching each other at this point. I'm gonna start by pinning together my side seams and making sure that line is perfectly lined up. Then we move to center front and we start pinning our way outward towards center back. Since we've already done the hard part, which is the gathering of the underneath of the bust, pinning this piece on should take no time at all. We're just gonna work on pinning the entire midriff lining piece to the bodice. And a quick reminder, since this is a lining piece, we're gonna leave it free three quarters of an inch from center back. Hopefully you're catching on by now that any lining is left free for three quarters of an inch at center back. I'm back at the machine again to attach my lining midriff piece to the bodice, starting at the center, center front once again, and this time I'm gonna sew it with a half an inch seam allowance instead of 5 8 The only reason I'm doing that is I like my lining pieces to drop just slightly below the seam that I already made for the front of the bodice. In reality, you could have actually pinned both these pieces on and sewn them at the same time. If you are a more confident sewer and you are very confident in your gathers, please by all means go ahead and do that and they both get sewn on exactly the same way. But the reason I sew one and then the other is so you can watch your gathers, make sure they're not getting weird puckers and you can check, make sure everything's sewn nicely in the front and then go ahead and sew on the back. And don't forget, we're leaving our three quarters of an inch free at the end. And consider this clip just a quick reminder that once you've sewn from center front to center back on one side, we're gonna flip the bodice over and sew from center front to center back on the other side, thus completing attaching the midriff lining piece. I'm back at my ironing board, taking my midriff piece and folding it downward. Thus, the insides of these two pieces are now touching each other and the inside looks nice and finished off and I'm gonna press it nice and flat. And then my bodice is pretty much all put together and we're ready to move on to our sleeves. Ooh la la, you have to admit that this dress is coming together really pretty and I can't wait to see the finished thing. Moving right along to the next step in our construction is attaching the sleeves. Now, a few things we're gonna prep before we attach the sleeves. First things first, any pins that I put in place to hold the armhole together, I'm gonna move those just back into the bodice so they're still there, still holding my two layers together properly, but I need to free up just the outside layer of the dress because we're only gonna sew the sleeve to the outside layer of the dress. Now, a little caveat here. If you want, you can actually sew both the lining and the shell of the dress to the sleeve and then just do a zigzag finish on that sleeve hole. I am not doing this specifically because my fabric is a little bit on the itchy side. So my plan is to attach my sleeve and then push the seam allowance into the lining, thus slip stitching the lining down on top. To pin our sleeve on, we're gonna start with our bodice inside out. So basically our lining is facing us. You're gonna take the appropriate sleeve for the appropriate side, and you know this by matching the notches up, and have that sleeve be right side out. You're gonna take the under seam of the sleeve and line it up with the side seam of the bodice. Once that's pinned, you're gonna start your pinning there. Now, this sleeve itself does not have any kind of gathering in the cap. It's supposed to be sewn into the armhole smooth, but it does have some easing like most sleeves do. What easing means in the sewing world is you basically have a shorter piece of fabric being stretched to match a longer piece of fabric. In this case, the armhole is the shorter piece of fabric and the longer piece of fabric is the sleeve. Most of the easing should occur at the sleeve cap or at the top of the sleeve. And we do that so it's easier for you to move your arm, especially if you're using a fabric with no stretch at all. My technique for figuring out exactly how much easing I need is I usually start from that side seam and pin my way up towards the cap to see exactly how much extra is built into the sleeve. And then I work that extra back downward, kind of adjusting my pins as I go and putting a little bit extra into each part between the pins. And then I do the stretching when I get to the sewing machine. 
Once you're done easing your sleeve into your armhole, you should have the most amount of easing at the top of the sleeve and the least amount of easing in the armpit. And once it's all pinned together, you're ready to go over to the sewing machine and inset your sleeve. Just a quick reminder before we jump on the machine that we are only sewing the two dress layers together and leaving the lining out of this seam at this time. When you sew an inset sleeve, we're going to start about an inch and a half before the underseam of the sleeve and the side seam meet. You're going to stitch past your underseam and side seam. You're going to go the full circle. You're going to pass where you started and you're going to go another inch and a half past the side seam. So you got about three inches there where you have it double sewn. And the reason we do this is because one of the most stressed places of the dress is the armpit. And we want to make sure we have double the stitching there to keep it nice and strong. So I'm gonna work my way around the sleeve, removing pins as I go and doing that gentle stretching of the arm hole to meet the length of the sleeve. I decided I don't think I'm gonna show you a ton of me attaching the sleeve physically at the machine because honestly, the angle is pretty darn terrible. Um, I apologize for that and I will work on getting you guys a better angle in the future. Terrible angle aside, I'm back at the ironing board with both of my sleeves attached. As you can see, the sleeves are inset, nice and smooth. There's no wrinkles or gathers along that seam line. And if we peek at the inside, we remember that the lining is left free and just the layers of the dress are sewn together. And if you've made it this far, congratulations, because we're about to move on to the last construction step for this video. You're gonna take the skirt portion of the dress and open it up so the inside of the skirt is facing you. Then you're gonna flip it basically upside down. So the waistline of the skirt should be towards the bottom of the screen or basically lined up with the midriff of the dress. I clipped my center front just so I was 100% sure where center front of the skirt is. And I'm gonna line up center front of the skirt with center front of the midriff band. And I'm sure at this point you've noticed a little bit of a theme in this video of starting at center front and working our way towards center back. But in case you hadn't, we're gonna start at center front and work our way towards center back. This step is gonna be completed like we did the sleeve. We're only sewing together the outside layers of the dress. So just the outside layer of the skirt and the outside layer of the midriff of the dress only two layers. We're doing this to leave our lining piece free so that when we go to do our finishing techniques in video three, we're gonna do a very nice push our seam allowance up into the midriff band and cover that with a slip stitch of our lining on top. Now you should have a side seam of your skirt that matches up perfectly with the side seam of the bodice. So when all three are sewn together, you have a lovely line going down the side from the side seam of the bodice, the side seam of the midriff and the side seam of the skirt. And since at this point, we're only sewing together the shell of the dress, you don't have to leave that three quarters of an inch open at the end of the seam. You can just sew the entire seam all together. And here's our entire skirt pinned to the midriff, ready to be sewn. And for the last time in this video, I will instruct you that we are starting at the center front. We are 5 8 seam allowance and a stitch length of three. And we are straight stitching all the way from center front to center back. Once we complete that step, you're going to flip the dress over, start at center front once again, and make your way towards center back. And here comes our nice steamy iron pressing open that waist seam that we just created. I'm pressing it from the inside and pressing it open, and then I'm going to press it upwards towards the midriff band. And here's a quick preview of our next video if you want to move on before I post it. We're gonna lay down that midriff lining band and I'm gonna push the seam allowance from the skirt up inside the band and I'm gonna slip stitch down the midriff lining. If you opted to line the skirt, this is the point where you'd attach the lining with the inside of the lining facing you and then it would fall down inside the skirt, hiding those three seams. And here's where we wrap up for this video. This is how our dress looks up to this point. Now I'm fully aware that this does not fit this form super well. Just keep in mind, I took a size 20 in the pattern and my form is a size eight since that's what most actresses tend to size out around. I hope we can get a sense from the video how beautiful the neckline really looks finished off with the lining inside. And these bell sleeves are really doing something for me. So I can't wait to get to video three to show you all the finishing techniques and wrap this beautiful dress up. 
Congratulations on making it to the end of part two of my easy holiday dress series. Keep an eye out for part three. It'll be posted soon. Not for nothing, if you can follow this whole tutorial, then I want to give you props because you've got some serious sewing skills under your belt. And before you go, let me thank you for stopping by Megan Grace DIY. And if you like my content, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. If you want to learn a little bit more about my channel, please feel free to check me out on Pinterest, Facebook, or Instagram. I do lots of fun contests. So if you want to find out about those, make sure you're following me on my other social medias. And as always, happy sewing.